So uh, welcome everyone to the first uh, actually Captain developer meeting. Uh, it's kind of our inauguration meeting. Uh, and uh, for today we have uh, planned a couple of things uh, we want to show you. Uh, and uh, yeah, most of you, uh, most of you uh, might already know. So all the content, everything we have, uh, check it out on captain.sh and also on our GitHub repository, uh, github.com slash captain slash captain. That's our main repository where you find all the source code. But we also have today Christian, uh, he, will, he has prepared demo, a, a demo for you. So there will be um, a dedicated repository for this. So we will see live coding uh, today. We will uh, see how to interact with Captain, how, where to put your content. So we have a lot of things prepared. So I think with this, uh, we get started. Um, and yeah, that's basically uh, what we have prepared for today. Uh, we will kind of tell you a little bit what is the workflow of Captain, how does Captain work internally, how you can interact with Captain, um, then uh, Captain Cloud events, what are Captain Cloud events, why you want to know them, uh, what you can do with them, and that's basically the things you need for interacting with Captain. And we will show you what are the main three use cases we can think of how to interact with Captain. So we have categorize them into three buckets and we will explain this to you and then uh, Christian will show you how to actually uh, implement one of those use cases. Uh, we have prepared a template. Um, he's going to use this template and then write from, let's say actually from scratch, a very new captain service that never existed before. Um, and we will do this live here today. And this is also the reason why we are recording this. So you can also watch this later on, follow this instruction, follow his lead and write your own service. Um, and uh, yeah, we also want to show you how to contribute to Captain. So if you want to contribute back to Captain, um, there are, yeah, there are a couple of ways how to do this and we just want to guide you through this uh, process. Um, so for the first part, um, like what is the Captain workflow? How does Captain work internally? How does it start? Um, and uh, yeah, Christian, you're most welcome also to kind of uh, interrupt me here if I miss anything. Um, sure. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't want to, to be like um, uh, only me talking, but um, yeah, I, I would just try to, to explain it a little bit. So um, basically, Captain is an event-based um, uh, workflow. So everything starts with an event that can be sent either from the uh, Captain uh, API or CLI. So you send it with the uh, Captain uh, CLI or you send it directly from other tools to the Captain API and it starts with the configuration change. So some of the configuration changes, so Captain will start its internal workflow. It goes to a deploy, Captain will start the deployment uh, into the state or to, to the next event deployment finished. It will start the, the tests. So the next event will be the, the tests finished event and at the very end the evaluation done event. So these are the main events in Captain. And what we have is already some default services that subscribe to these events and then they will execute their logic. So when there is a new configuration change, the default service inside Captain is the Helm service. So Helm starts the deployment and will inform Captain that the deployment uh, is finished. So that's the next event. Uh, for a deployment finished event, there we have the JMeter service, which is the default service in Captain for the tests. So the JMeter service will be informed because it's subscribed to this uh, very um, event type. Um, so the JMeter service will start its work and will inform Captain when this work is done. Uh, so it's basically when the tests are finished. So the next event is this tests finished event. And uh, here we have our Lighthouse service, which is basically the implementation of the Captain Quality Gate and it listens for tests finished events so we can start the evaluation uh, and it will inform Captain again when the evaluation is done. And the next part would be the gatekeeper service which decides if we start again with the configuration change in the next phase or if we roll it back. So we do have some default services, but because we have this um, event-based mechanism, you can also subscribe with your own services to this um, events um, and you can actually also exchange this. So this is one, like one um, basic workflow in Captain, but there are other workflows possible. So for, um, for example, if you only have the Captain Quality Gates workflow, then it's basically you start with an evaluation and uh, you don't do the, the deployment or the testing within Captain. 
this might be done outside of Captain, so you can only start the evaluation workflow, which then again, the Lighto service, which is subscribed to this start evaluation, will do its work. Uh, do, uh, it will do the evaluation, send back the evaluation done event, and the gatekeeper service can then promote it or not. So here, you also have the possibility only to use the part of Captain and not the, like the, not the complete Captain um, full-blown version, I would say. And yeah, as I said, there are different ways. And actually, this, um, there is another way the, um, when you want to do, uh, when you actually want to trigger the tests. And I think, Christian, this is the example you have prepared for, um, for today. Yes, uh, exactly. So as you've seen in the previous example with the quality gates use case, we would have started with a start evaluation event, but at the same time, um, we could have started with a deployment finished event um, because let's say you have a Jenkins pipeline or whatever other pipeline in the background that basically just sends a deployment finished event into Captain. Um, but the thing that's missing here right now, obviously, is the Chemita service because with the Captain Quality Gates installation, we only provide Lighthouse and some other things in the background that are necessary. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, find that missing piece. We're actually going to implement that missing piece. We're going to implement a custom test service. And we're going to do this with a template uh, that's written in Golang, basically just to show how easy it is to write such a thing. Yeah. And the nice thing about it, this is that it nicely interacts with the existing captain installation. So there's no need to actually change your configuration of, of captain or to change anything in captain. You only install another service and then you can trigger a deployment finished event. That's, that's pretty cool. Actually, I'm really looking forward to see this demo. Um, we talked about it, but I, I haven't seen it live. So I'm really looking forward. Um, and uh, yeah, that's also the part where all the Captain Cloud events uh, come into play, right? Exactly, thanks for that segue. Um, so uh, basically Captain Cloud events, they are implementing the Cloud Event 0.2 specification. By the way, we're planning an upgrade to the Cloud Event 1.0 spec uh, in the near future. So uh, don't miss out on that. Anyway, uh, the cloud events are right now specified on our GitHub repo called github.com slash captain slash spec. Jürgen has provided the link uh, to the cloud events uh, specific part in the presentation. I think you will share this presentation later with the community as well. And so what is a cloud event in case you are new to captain or in case you, you haven't you have, a, you have never seen such a cloud event. Basically, it's a specification that has a couple of fields that are necessary, for instance, the type. And the type is something that we can control um, in our environment. So one example type would be a configuration change, or as it is written down here, sh.captain.event.configuration.change. So all our cloud events basically have such a, a string as a type. Another um, field in a cloud event that is necessary is the data field. And within the data field, that's basically our payload. And you will find examples of that payload in the cloud events link that's uh, linked above. But uh, the next thing that is important for you is to know um, how you can actually send such a cloud event to Captain. Most of you probably have heard about the Captain Send Event New Artifact and maybe also about the Captain Send Event Start Evaluation. But in fact, you can send any cloud event that's specified to Captain. Um, I've linked the reference to the API in this presentation. So if you go to that reference at a later point, you can see uh, a way to interact with Captain via a REST API. Or if you don't want to implement the REST API, you can also just use the Captain CLI by using the Captain Send Event command. And instead of specifying an event name, you can specify a JSON payload in here via minus F and a file name. I will actually demo that later because I need that. And you can also find uh, docs on that specific captain feature in the captain docs page. Cool, awesome. So um, before we jump into, into the demo, maybe at this point, I will also uh, remind you. Um, so we have in the Zoom webinar, we have uh, also the possibility to ask questions or use the Q and A um, feature or just uh, post some, some questions in the, in the chat if you want. After we have seen the demo, uh, we also, we, we will stop the, uh, the cloud recording 
and we can still have like uh, some questions uh, in this in this meeting uh, which are not recorded. So if you don't want to have your questions uh, recorded or if you just want to have like a discussion maybe with Christian or with other folks from the captain development team, uh, we can do this uh, also once we stop the recording. So it's, there is no need for, for you to be kind of recorded. Uh, if you want to wait uh, with your questions, you can wait at the, at, until the end, but you can also uh, let us know during, uh, during the demo uh, if you have any questions. Um, before we jump into the demo, um, we just want to show you those, like the three different categories we can think of how to interact with Captain. And we've also seen uh, already like the Captain workflow and where to jump in, um, how to control flow maybe, how to listen for events. But we think there are basically three different use cases um, how to interact with Captain. And uh, let's start with the first use case uh, where you can think of something like a notification service or logging or something for auditing or these kind of things where you actually don't want to control the, the captain workflow. You don't want to uh, interfere with the captain workflow. You just want to subscribe to it and just receive the events. So here, basic step would be you subscribe to the captain event, only maybe to all of them or just to those event types that are relevant for you. And then you will receive this event and then you can do your code execution, your business logic within your service. And there is no need to send back anything to Captain. So it's basically you just listen for events and then do your magic. No need to, in, to send back something to Captain. Um, we have seen these kind of integrations, for example, for a notification service, which works with Slack, uh, with MS Teams and others. Um, so you can kind of get your um, Captain events directly in your in your um, chat tool. Um, the next use case would be um, to provide something like a testing service to provide something for captain uh, how to interact with captain when we can think of instead of Gmeter maybe using some other testing tool uh, so you would subscribe to the captain event you would receive the event and then execute the code maybe start some tests or um, do something uh, do something else and then sending back an event to Captain to continue the Captain workflow. So that's what we've seen also in the previous slides. And that's also what Christian is going to demo today. And then there is actually a third use case where you will, um, you don't subscribe for events, but you just maybe trigger a Captain workflow. Maybe you just send to Captain uh, a new artifact event or an, some other events to trigger parts of the captain workflow and you don't subscribe to events and basically maybe you, you don't even have, have a lot of um, custom code you want to execute before but maybe just trigger after some other automation pipelines maybe then to trigger the captain workflow so you can also uh, trigger this by just sending cloud events to captain and i think from this point uh christian the stage is all yours uh, again, if there are any questions, uh, let us know via the chat feature or Q&A feature. Um, if you want to wait with your questions, and we can jump into a discussion afterwards. But uh, now I'm really looking forward to see um, what, uh, how to write uh, my first captain service. Yeah, thank you, Jürgen. Can you stop the share so I can start sharing? Yeah, great. Sorry, I, I muted myself, but didn't stop the, the share. <laughs> All right, you should be able to see my screen now, I guess. Yes. Um, so how to write your first captain service. There's a couple of prerequisites that you need. The first one is obviously an IDE. We recommend either using Visual Studio Code or JetBrains Goland. There's some plugins uh, that you should use for Visual Studio Code and for JetBrains Goland, um, but you can do without them. But just in case you're watching this, uh, just install those plugins if you have the time. You should also have the Docker CLI ready to go on your local computer and a Docker Hub account, or if you want to use any other container registry that would obviously also work, uh, but makes the workflow a little bit more uh, difficult. KubeCTL, uh, you should already have that, but in case you haven't, please install it. Uh, the version doesn't matter that much, just use the latest one for kubectl, uh, but for, for the Kubernetes cluster, we recommend having versions 1.13 to 1.15 for full interoperability with uh, all the captain features. In my case, I'm actually using it and demoing this using Minikube. 
Um, so that's also a very nice uh, example. If you're just a developer and you don't have a cluster or you don't have the money uh, to spend on Google Kubernetes or other uh, providers, you can also just use Minikube. It works nicely on most computers um, with some restrictions, obviously, on Windows and Mac OS that might apply or might not apply depending on your setup. But uh, basically, just look it up and you will figure it out, I'm sure. Optional but also recommended is a GitHub account and Travis CI enabled, but you don't need that for this tutorial. This is just for further development after that. Um, but what I really do recommend is that you take a look into the tool called Scaffold. It's also a tool developed by Google. You don't need it, but if you have it, it makes your development workflow with Kubernetes a lot nicer. All right, so in, prep in preparation of this tutorial, I've already executed a couple of commands, uh, which basically is to create a new Minikube cluster. Um, I've stopped and deleted the cluster that I was using before, just in case. Uh, Obviously, if you have data in there, uh, make sure to back them up. But if you're just using that for experimental and testing stuff, you should stop and delete it. And I've started a new cluster, this case uh, using the minus minus VM driver none option, uh, because that would run on bare metal, so to say. You don't need a virtual machine for that. It just runs with Docker, uh, with the caveat that you cannot use the Captain Fool installation. Anyway, um, I'll get to that in a second. After um, setting up the cluster, I always like to verify that my cluster is actually working. Uh, for this, I use kubectl get nodes, and it just tells you, okay, I'm on a Dell Precision laptop and the status is ready, and it's in version 1.17. All right, after I verified that, I also already installed Captain, in this case, Captain version 0.6.1 with the use case quality gates option, platform Kubernetes, as we are on Minikube, we don't need any special features for that, just use platform Kubernetes. And I selected gateway node port. Um, that last thing is crucial. It might not always work depending on your setup. If, if you use a virtual machine, for instance, instead of the VM driver equals none option, you might have to specify gateway load balancer, or actually you don't have to specify it because it's the default option. But uh, in that case, it might work a little different. However, uh, this is documented on our docs page. So uh, as you can see in the screenshot, the installation basically has uh, run through and it has finished. And with that, I have basically only one thing left to do. It's to verify that my Captain installation is working as intended. Um, I basically just check what pods has Captain installed in my cluster using kubectl get pods minus n for namespace Captain. And you can see a couple of uh, well-known services like the event broker, Helm service, Lighthouse, Shipyard, API and bridge that have been deployed by Captain. And last but not least, uh, also a nice step to verify that Captain has been installed successfully is to just execute Captain status. I'll actually show that in a second again. Now uh, we can start with the tutorial and let's talk about what the tutorial will show. We will actually build a Captain service in Go and that service will take a deployment finished event. It will execute wget on the public deployment URI. In case you don't know that thing yet, um, that's a new variable or that's a new data field on our deployment finished event that we've introduced with Captain 061. Um, you will see it in action in, in a couple of minutes, so don't worry. And after we've executed wget on that URI, we will send a test finished event back to the Captain cluster. For this uh, little demo, we have prepared a template repository, which is currently located under github.com slash captain sandbox slash captain service template go. Um, this link will most likely change in the future, but GitHub should have a redirect, so uh, the link will still work. And in case you're interested in the final product, the final product or the final outcome of this tutorial is also available under my personal GitHub uh, repository. All right, um, so just to tease you a little bit, what will be the outcome that we can see in Captain's Bridge, hopefully. Um, what we should see in Captain's Bridge is a deployment finished event that we send in, and the wget test service reacts with a test finished event. In this case, it's a successful test, and we'll send an evaluation done event. Uh, sorry, Lighthouse will pick it up and then evaluate the result of the tests and send an ev evaluation done event. 
Um, we did not install um, the, the option to have an SLI provider like Dynatrace or Prometheus in this case, because we wanted to keep the tutorial as simple and as easy to follow as possible. All right, uh, with that, I will start with the steps you need to do. Um, actually, as the first step that I just promised before, you should execute captain status to verify that your cluster is actually running. And what's also always nice is to click on the API or to open the API in a browser um, and go to the Swagger UI. There we go. Uh, that's just to verify that everything that we see is actually available. And what you can see here is, for instance, the event endpoint that you can use to send a cloud event to. Um, we won't use that endpoint, uh, just in case you're interested. You can easily figure it out via the Swagger UI. Um, just as a, um, as a hint here, if people are not so much familiar with the Swagger UI, it's basically an interactive UI uh, where you can also take the Captain API token uh, how to retrieve that, it's, everything is in the captain documentation, and then you can authorize here, and you can basically execute the commands directly in this, um, in this UI here, so you have a better over understanding uh, how, how the API really works, instead of uh, having to use some external tools like uh, Postman or Insomnia. Or, yeah. So it's a, it's, it comes in quite handy uh, when you just want to test uh, one endpoint uh, and uh, kind of have, have, get the feeling how to interact with Captain. Yes, thank you, Jürgen. Uh, that's exactly what it is for. And uh, obviously the API is going to change over the next couple of months uh, with new features coming in and new endpoints coming in. So what you're seeing here is obviously what is available right now in Captain 061. And at the later point, there will be more endpoints available. But uh, it's actually not necessary in the long term. We will use the CLI for our demo and we will show you that in a second. So uh, on to the captain service template that we have available here. Um, it is right now in the captain sandbox con uh, um, organization. Jürgen will tell you a little bit about that later. And with this little template, uh, we bring a couple of files to you, like a main.go file, an eventhandler.go file, a go mod and the go sum. So in case you're new to the go development, these would be your main files that you should look at. Uh, within that repository if you just want to develop. If you want to have a broader look at all the other files, I can recommend also looking into the deploy folder where we have the Kubernetes deployment, um, which we will show in a second, but we won't uh, stay too long with that. And we, for instance, have a Travis.yaml file that you can use for some automated testing and building and some other files that uh, are usually found in, in a repo. Um, one important thing is also the Docker file. I will show that in the code editor later, but uh, just to give you a quick overview of what this repository has. So uh, how to use this repository? Um, the easiest way is to download it. I don't recommend cloning it because we will have to set up a new Git repo anyway. So just click here and select download the zip, or at a later point, you can probably go to the GitHub releases page and download the zip file from there. And then you can see there is this folder called Captain Service Template Go Master. I recommend going into that folder and then selecting all those files and extracting it into your folder wherever you want to. I have this in a projects folder, so I'm just going to call my service now um, wget test service. I ah, already have that. Let's call it simple wget test service. All right. And I'm going to extract it here. Now, uh, in case you are familiar with Go and you are wondering, don't you have to set a Go project path or something? Or what is my special setup with that? Uh, my answer to that is no, you don't have to do that anymore. We're using Go modules. And by using Go modules, a lot of these steps are a lot easier. So you're not bound anymore to such a directory. All right. Um, to start with, I'm just going to go into my projects folder and I'm going to go into my simple wget test service. You can also just use your file explorer to do that. Um, I'm just using that as a shortcut to start Visual Studio Code. Um, but you could have also just uh, started Visual Studio Code from wherever and just select open folder. All right. Um, I hope the font size is OK to read, Jürgen. I think so, yes. Yeah, um, great. And what I just want to highlight here is that um, when you watch this video, maybe later, um, because we also put it online uh, on YouTube. Uh, so if you watch this, um, the, we 
Christian really just started with just copying this um, the template. So um, there is right now there is no custom code, code in it. So actually we are going to start coding right now. So that's like the perfect time um, yep. to jump in here. Yeah, yeah great, thank you. Um, so uh, as a first thing, what I would recommend is opening the readme or in case you had it open in the browser already, you can also just look here. And uh, because this readme section has a quick start section as well um, on how to use this template. Basically, we have downloaded it and now we need to replace a couple of strings. So we've written captain service template at a couple of uh, occurrences in here. Uh, we're just going to use the built-in functionality of Visual Studio Code and we're going to search for captain service template go. And we're going to replace that with our name, which is simple wget test service. It's 52 occurrences, um, but that makes the whole process a lot easier. And then the next step here is uh, to also double check uh, our image names. Uh, basically, we've written your username at a couple of image names. Um, this is a container image or a Docker image. Uh, we need to change that to our Docker Hub organization, which in my case, it's just my name. Um, so if you don't know it, just go to Docker Hub or hub.docker.com, create an account, log in, and it's just your name. And what this basically does is um, it replaces a lot of occurrences um, of our image names that you can, for instance, find in the readme. So in the readme, we've written a couple of common tasks. And one of these common tasks is the Docker build command for our source code. And as you can see, uh, it, it now has my Docker Hub username in here and my service image name that I've replaced. Uh, if you look in the readme, here you can see it's the template name. All right, uh, let me double check the list here so I don't forget anything. Um, yeah, we can probably just uh, initialize the Git repo and push our code there. That's fine, we should do that. So as I just extracted this, uh, I wanna make sure I have a terminal open and write git init dot and git add dot. I have a git ignore file. Uh, right there um, that ignores a couple of files. This is best practice. So we don't add anything that's like secure or a binary. Uh, we're just gonna write a git commit, initial commit. All of this you can obviously also do just via the UI. Um, it's just like I'm a terminal person uh, in case you haven't figured it out. <laughs> All right. Um, so then the remaining steps of the readme we can ignore for now. Um, for now, we're gonna just explore the repository a little bit. So uh, let's start with the service.yaml file that I promised you to show earlier. This is our Kubernetes deployment and it basically contains as a first step, a deployment of our simple wget test service. Uh, it has the image name of that service. It says that we're gonna use port 8080 within that service. And there is some other configuration variables that we need uh, to communicate with the captain cluster. In addition, we need to make sure that's a Kubernetes thing, although uh, to expose our service on port 8080 so other services within the cluster can reach it. And last but not least, actually one of the most important things you need to do is you need to subscribe to a cloud event or even to a multiple cloud events. And this is done via a captain distributor. And within that, basically to give you the short uh, story, we have a Docker image that's called Captain Distributor. It's also available in version 061. And it uses a NUTS cluster to connect to, and we're subscribing to all events that start with sh.captain. This is all pre-configured. You don't have to touch this if you don't want to. So that's all there. The next thing that's pre-configured and that you don't have to touch is the main.go file. Um, that basically has a couple of options that you can pass via environment variables. So if you wanna extend your service, if you wanna do advanced stuff, if you wanna have like secrets passed to your service, you can do that via environment options, but that's beyond this tutorial. Today's focus is just listening to a cloud event. Um, if you're interested, just look into the source code of this file. It's not very complicated, but again, it's, uh, it's not uh, something we wanna go into detail today. The only thing that we wanna present today is this short process captain cloud event thing uh, function that we have right there. This is used to 
process an incoming cloud event. So the NUTS cluster via the distributor will send a cloud event to our simple WGET test service. And here we basically have a long if else if uh, chain that uh, checks for the type and passes the cloud event for you and then sends the cloud event to another function. So uh, now this is the, the funny or the interesting part for you where it starts. If you go into that uh, function, you can either control click. Uh, so I haven't set up my IDE except for installing the plugins. This is all pre-configured in the IDE. You can control click into this function and it will be opened for you. Or um, if you want to do it the other way around, you can go into the file called eventhandlers.go in your file system and just open this file. And that's, that's your main entry point where you should start writing code now. Um, this file basically contains a couple of handle functions. So for instance, handle configuration change event or handle deployment finished event, handle test finished event and some others. And you can extend it obviously with other event functions and you would have to say, uh, uh, specify the name of the event in main.go, uh, but that's also beyond of the tutorial today because today we're gonna focus on the handle deployment finished event function. So if you remember the screenshot from before and the use case that I've told you, we have an external deployment tool. For instance, Jenkins has deployed using whatever tool that you can imagine. And in the end, our Jenkins pipeline is just used to say, oh, I wanna start testing now. I've successfully deployed, but Captain, you handle the testing and you handle the evaluation. And so somebody else sends a deployment finished event into Captain and we need to listen to that event. And the nice thing here is now that we have uh, some utility functions that we can work with. So for instance, I've already written it in our template here as an example, we can use the myCaptain.sendTestFinished event. So myCaptain is a variable passed to this function. It basically contains uh, some other variables that are set for you automatically. Don't worry too much about it. But what you can do is, and again, this is pre-configured in the IDE, you can say my captain dot and it will give you a couple of things. Um, unfortunately, not what I was looking for. That's easy to explain although. Before we actually start, we should try to compile our code because uh, we've just extracted the Git repository. We haven't downloaded any dependencies. So uh, I'm opening the readme. I'm gonna go to the common tasks and there's the common task. The first one is build the binary. And if you're not familiar with Go, basically this is just a compile command. If you're familiar with Go, I don't need to explain it to you anyway. <laughs> so uh, let's test this. Let's hope it works, crossing fingers. Yeah, we got our binary here. Um, in fact, uh, this binary is already executable. We can run it. This, so the source code we actually deliver here is a, is a working example, it just works. <laughs> um, that, however, should have downloaded some dependencies for us. And now we should get some auto completion maybe. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I didn't see it earlier, but we have it here. Uh, we wanna send the test finished event. And this test finished event takes auto completion and uh, code completion at its best. It takes an incoming event or a pointer to the incoming event which is available as a parameter here. It also takes a test strategy, a deployment strategy, which we don't actually need right now. We can just leave that empty. We have a smart default built in. If it's empty, it takes the deployment strategy and the test strategy of the incoming event. The same is true for project, service, and stage. All that information is actually coming from the incoming event, so that's fine. And the next parameter it takes is a time event. It's called started at. So uh, for this, we will actually store it in a variable. No, it's not auto completing right now, but I think it should have, yeah, it has import time now for me. So uh, Visual Studio Code is working as it should be. And this parameter now here is the started at parameter. This just captures the time when we started testing. So in the end, uh, there's two timestamps that you're interested in, the time when you started testing and the time that you finished testing. And the second thing, so the time when you finish testing is basically determined by when you call the send test finished event. All right, uh, last but not least, we need a result. Uh, we're gonna have that 
I think warn or warning for now. And we need some labels. I think I can enter nil. No, I don't. Uh, I need to pass the labels here. It's actually not implemented yet. So uh, we have the incoming event here. This is the full cloud event. And we have the incoming event data. So the deployment finished event, which we can process here. It's coming in from data. And if we can take a look what's in this event. So we just write data dot and you get a couple of arrivals that's in that event. So everything working as expected here. Um, last but not least, we need to specify an event source. And in this case, the event source is just gonna be simple wget test service. So basically this is a, a label, a string that you wanna just send to indicate where this event is coming from. And it looks like I have an error somewhere here. Um, not enough arguments, did I forget one? I think I did. Or it's not updating. Okay, it wasn't updating. All right, and so fine, with yeah. that setting that we have right here, we could actually just start and deploy our service and, and watch it working in progress. Now, this is nothing fancy yet, obviously, I know that, but uh, just to give you a quick overview of what this does. So uh, what do we need to do? The manual steps now would be to build our image using Docker build and uh, then push this image to our Docker Hub registry and then select kubectl apply minus F uh, and yeah. It's a couple of manual steps that I wanna skip for now. Um, hence, I have included this little tool here called scaffold and we're just gonna run scaffold run minus minus tail. The minus minus tail means to print the log output from the service and what scaffold now does is it executes the command that I just mentioned. It executes the Docker build. It pushes it to the Docker Hub registry and it applies the deployment that we have in here. And for that, uh, it's important to know there is a file called scaffold.yaml in here, which basically specifies exactly that. It specifies that you should build this Docker image, which is specified by the Docker file, and you should deploy a Kubernetes manifest file. So while that is working, um, I'm gonna expose the captain's bridge because we wanna watch what's going on. Yeah, I don't have it. There we go. So I'm gonna expose captain's bridge. This is a command that you will find um, in our tutorial. It's actually not exposing. I'm just port forwarding to the bridge container. And we can open it via localhost 9000. And our bridge is currently empty because we don't have a project in here. But that was also expected, obviously. So uh, we need to create a new project before we actually continue developing so we can test it. So I have downloaded the captain examples, which you can find on the github.com slash captain slash examples. Um, it's also in our tutorials. And in that we have the onboarding cards folder. And what we need to do is we need to create a project. I'm gonna call it sock shop. And I'm gonna use the shipyard file called, uh, I think it's called shipyard quality gates .yaml. Yeah, um, maybe take, let's take a look at the shipyard quality gates YAML file. This is basically a very, very basic shipyard file that only contains one stage and the stage is called hardening. The next thing we need to do is create a service. So I'm gonna create a service called cards. Could be any name right now, really. Um, I'm just gonna use it because the demo is prepared with that. And I'm gonna refresh my bridge and I have my sock shop project and my hardening stage right now. There's no events in here except for the service create event, but yeah. Maybe at this point, uh, sorry Christian for interrupt, interrupting, but maybe at this point I can highlight that we also do have this um, EAP program for the captain's bridge. So you just uh, installed captain. Um, so uh, obviously you're showing us the latest um, let's say a uh, released version of the captain's bridge in uh, 0.6.1, uh, but we do also have um, a 
ERP program. Uh, so where you can get like the latest um, versions of the Captain's Bridge. So if you're interested in this, uh, we have already um, a couple of uh, very nice improvements um, in the latest version. So you can check it out here on captain.sh and you will find the instructions how to, uh, to change or how to upgrade um, your Captain's Bridge from the latest release version to the ERP version. It's basically exactly this one command that Christian is highlighting here. Yeah, it's actually a good point. Uh, I can just do that, you know? Um, let's just, this is not part of the tutorial. Uh, it's just part of the experience. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't want to, to sidetrack here. But <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> I just want to, to let the others know um, if, if they're interested in like uh, always the latest and greatest um, then the captain's bridge is definitely something uh, you can check out. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. The, the service is compiling in the background. So yeah, I have the time for that. Um, so I just executed that command and it says it's updated. The only thing we need to do is uh, the port forwarding is uh, not working. Once you update the image, you need to cancel the port forwarding and restart it. And if I refresh here now, we should see, yep, it just changed. There is the new um, version string below here from the ERP version. And with that, we should see a couple of new features, maybe if you can spot them. I won't tell you. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. The service is actually running right now. Um, as we can see, there's a couple of uh, log outputs already there. Um, so, what is this doing right now? It's sending like unhandled Captain Cloud event messages because we have some internal events that uh, we also have received. Um, don't worry too much about them. This is basically just uh, troubleshooting and debug output. Um, for our service, we just wonder what's happening when we send a deployment finished event into Captain. And for that, I have prepared a couple of test events here. So, there's a deployment finished HTTP event right now that we could use for this purpose. Um, this is basically made for Postman and it would send the event to port 8080. But as I promised today, I want to use the, the Captain uh, CLI to send that event. So I would just take the event payload from here. I copy it and I will create a new file in here and I'm gonna call it uh, deployment finished.event. And I will copy paste my JSON payload in here. And then from another terminal session, I will just say captain send event minus F uh, deployment finished dot event. And that should actually send the deployment finished event into my cluster. So it returns a, a captain context ID here, uh, starting with 575 and we should actually see the very same ID uh, popping up in our captain's bridge in the cards microservice in a couple of seconds. So I'm just waiting for auto refresh uh, to, to load the new event, which should happen any second now. There we go. So we just got a deployment finished event in bridge. We've just sent it using the captain's uh, CLI. And what this actually should do, this actually should uh, load uh, the deployment service that we've, uh, sorry, should handle the deployment finished event that we've implemented in here and send out a test finished event, which it isn't doing, but that's fine. That's why we have the log output for. All right, so the log output basically tells us uh, it's handling the deployment finished event but it has a validation error somewhere, I guess. Or it hasn't sent. I guess it hasn't sent the deployment finished event, the test finished event, but uh, we will figure out why. I have a working example, so um, we will figure it out. <laughs> All right. Um, but now on to the actual thing uh, that's still a big to do here. We want to execute some tests. And how do we do that? you would ask and the question is, we just have to implement it obviously. <laughs> and what we wanna do is we wanna call wget of data dot, what is it called? Deployment URI public, I think. There we go. We wanna execute wget of data deployment URI public. And to do that, we need in Go just to call uh, exec dot command. So that's the, um, that's the uh, Go library that does that for us. And for that, we're gonna use wget. That's the calling binary that we're gonna call.
as captain.sh and it would download uh, the index HTML page of captain.sh to my local hard drive. And we want to use the tool to implement a basic health check. You could also implement this to run like a, a loop, like a loop of 1000 requests that you want to execute, or you can even run parallel requests if you want, but that's a go feature. Um, yeah, whatever you think can think about, just you need to implement it in here, but this is the starting point. And what we need from that is um, this thing returns a command and this command needs to run. And running that command actually returns, uh, let me double check my cheat sheet here. Um, that was actually wrong, sorry. We need this, the command will generate some output once I execute this. So we're gonna capture the std out in case there is like any obvious messages coming from wget, uh, it's being captured. And in case wget exits with a non-zero exit code, it's being captured in this little error. And that error we're gonna catch. So we're gonna just say if error unequal nil, we're gonna print this little error and we're gonna in case there is an error we're gonna return a test finished event i'm just gonna copy paste it from my from my cheat sheet here in case there is an error we will return a test finished event with a status error and i think i need to zoom out a little bit so there we go um, we're going to send the test finished event and in case there's no error, which is the obvious else part, we're just going to send a test finished event with status success. I'm also just going to copy paste that just to be 100% sure that I don't miss anything. And we have to write like the real service name here, which is the simple wget test service. And I think according to the uh, yeah the variable is called differently. Yeah, just saw that. Thanks. So uh, with that, uh, that's actually all you need to do. Um, as we capture std out here, we should make it uh, like make some troubleshooting output in case we need it, and that should actually already work. Um, as I said before, I'm using scaffold, so I'm just gonna run scaffold. I just uh, did the control C in the console and I'm gonna run scaffold run minus minus tail again. This is gonna build my Docker container and uh, bring it up. So there if I can go, just it's... ask a question here. So the basic, or like the only thing we have to do with this template is really to implement one function here. It's the handle deployment finished event function or the handle whatever, like a handle, a handler function uh, that's the only thing we have to implement and we send back the um, the captain cloud event that's already kind of indicated in our template code. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so that's that, it's, it's very simple. Um, all right, um, so this thing is now deployed. I'm gonna switch to my second terminal here and I'm gonna send the same deployment finished event again. Um, I'm just gonna change I'm just gonna change the captain context ID because uh, that should actually be random. In fact, I'm just gonna leave it out because that will generate a new ID for me. And we're gonna increase, like you see those labels we have here, we can see them in bridge as well. We're gonna increase our build ID to build 18 and our test ID can stay as it is. And we're gonna send the same event again using captain send event. And there we go, we just got a new idea of a captain context and we should see that coming up in captain's bridge any second now by the way um, there you can see the labels of the event that we sent in before all right there we have the new deployment finished event and it has a build number and now i'm actually really really hoping that the demo gods are with me. Um, error sending cloud event. So I believe it's not able to send the cloud event to my message broker for some reason. 
Um, I need to dig into that, uh, but what we can see is this would be the cloud event that it would have sent, um, or at least this is the payload of the cloud event that it would have sent, and it has sent a result error. Um, so for some reason, the wget command has probably failed, but uh, that's easy to explain because we need to take a look. Our wget would actually try to access this domain, and I'm guessing this domain is just not available. So I'm going to switch the deployment URI public for demo purposes here uh, to captain.sh. I'm going to send in the same event again. I'm going to look at the log output now. There we go. It now sends a cloud event with a result success because now it is able to access it. Um, we still seem to have a problem not being able to reach our message broker, which uh, I don't know why it's happening right now. Um, the demo gods obviously are not with me. Uh, Andreas Kremer has just uh, posted a chat message that your uh, stage name might be different. This is true. Um, this could be an issue. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, obviously, there is some validation in there and uh, the stage name is called Def here and it should be hardening. Let's try it. No, it's, it, it worked. We do now have the hardening event in here. Um, again, with a result error apparently, but uh, for some reason it's not able to send the cloud event. Um, yeah, um, but as I uh, have shown uh, in the screenshot before, I got this actually working uh, this morning. So uh, there's nothing I can actually do right now to, to make this work, uh, except for like going to debugging, uh, which I think is not interesting for this video right now. Um, but uh, with that, I would like to complete my tutorial and I promise we will uh, find this error and document it with, uh, and uh, make sure it's part of the tutorial. But in the end, this is all that you have to write. Um, just to comment again on this uh, error that I did uh, with the stage, we have a couple of test events uh, in our repository, obviously open them, um, check the contents of them. Our test events are usually taken from the spec. Um, so the spec usually works with like sock shop and service cards and stage dev, and you need to adapt them obviously to your example and to your demo. All right, uh, with that, I think I will hand it back to you, Jürgen, and yeah, we can thanks. take some questions if we sure. want to. I just want to um, highlight that, uh, let me just switch to the last slides here. Thank, thanks so much for uh, Christian for your tutorial and I will uh, open up the round for questions just in a minute. Uh, I just want to highlight uh, that how to actually contribute to Captain uh, because that's quite easy and if you already have some projects you're working on uh, that you want to contribute to Captain or if you want just want to uh, contribute to existing parts of Captain then you can either go to the Captain um, Git repository or organization and you find on the existing code, you maybe find some uh, improvements you want to do or uh, maybe you want to kind of work with us, then you can do it on the existing repositories. If you have new repositories, then the first part would be to, um, uh, to uh, propose them to the Captain Sandbox organization. Uh, so you can just go there, open up an issue um, and we will reach out to you to uh, bring your repositories over from your personal GitHub account to the Captain Sandbox account uh, or organization. So you can work on this in the Captain Sandbox. Um, and we, uh, like, uh, you can contribute to the Captain community and the whole Captain community can uh, profit from, from everything you've done uh, already. And uh, graduated content, content that is already out there, content that is already used uh, by the Captain team or Captain adopters, uh, that's, it, gets um, graduated from the sandbox to Captain Concrete. So everything now starts in Captain Sandbox. Um, so that's also the reason why the template starts in Captain Sandbox. And then we will move it over to Captain Concrete once it has uh, its first adopters. And uh, if it's used and maintains, then we can move it to the Captain Concrete organization. But Captain Sandbox is really the place where you can start, uh, where you can get in touch also with the Captain developers. Uh, and it's, it's kind of the starting point for all Captain community content and uh, contribution. So we are looking forward uh, to see some content there. It's already uh, quite a couple of repositories are, are there. So you can also take a look there, maybe learn from others. 
and then contribute your content as well. And the last part, uh, I just want to highlight um, that uh, it's easy also to get in touch with the whole captain team outside of those uh, weekly cadence of community meetings and developer meetings. Uh, just uh, reach out to us on the captain Slack um, channels, uh, follow us on Twitter, and uh, yeah, you already know uh, our GitHub repositories, and now we have these two contribution repositories as well, which I just explained. So with this, uh, I think I'm going to stop the, re uh, the recording, just stay in this meeting and just stop the, um, the cloud recording and we just open up the round for um, questions. I just uh, have to find it where I stopped the recording. Uh, it says stop share, but I don't want to stop the sharing. Um, so if someone finds how to stop the recording, then just, uh, oh, here we uh, go. That's